always come back here to the issue of flooding. You're welcome back to New Day right here on TV3 and we're getting into the issue of flooding. Yes, we've spoken about it several times already, but immediately we enter the rainy season, we need to go back to the discussion and have it because people are still dying. Um, there's still flooding in areas that there shouldn't be. People have still built on waterways. So we need to have the discussion. In studio, uh, I've been joined by w Mr. Wise Ametepe. He's a hydrologist and also Senna Adiepena. He's the operations manager of Dredge Masters Limited. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. I'll start with you, Mr. Amatepe. Uh, what would you say is the problems that the drainage system in Ghana has? Um, the drains in Kumasi, the drains in Accra, in Takradi. What's the problem with the drainage system that we have? <coughs> Thank you. And uh, pleased to be with you this morning. Um, the drainage problem of Ghana, uh, I think we can uh, categorize them as follows. First of all, we have the issue itself we call drainage. Mm. And that drainage means the ability of the water to flow through the channels. Uh, and then some of these channels are not adequate to be able to convey the flows. And so, when the flood comes, it spills over its banks and floods communities. Mm. That is one. We also have some structures on the, uh, these channels mm -hmm. which do not have the adequate capacity, like some culverts, some bridges. They may not have the adequate capacity, so they obstruct the flow, free flow of the water, and so create what we call temporary or uh, localized ponding. Right. So that area, the zone at which uh, these facilities are, get flooded. Mm. That is one component of the drainage. Then, when we come to the issue of flood management, um, you have drained to convey the flow, mm -hmm. but the flood that comes, we must be able to have the capacity to be able to manage the flood. Right. And how do we manage that? Um, we need to have facilities, for example, Accra, where the city apparently developed from the lower mm. uh, lying areas and is gradually expanding towards the upstream areas where the streams actually uh, come from. So as part of the management, we need to be able to create facilities to be able to store some of the water upstream so that we do not allow all the upstream water to be discharged immediately onto the city center, so that we allow the city centers to move away. So this is one aspect mm -hmm. of the management. We are not doing this aspect of the management. The city is expanding. Everybody is, uh, we're having roofs, we're having roofs, we are cutting down all our trees, infiltration capacities are limited, and so we, allow the water to run faster right. to the town. We call it the, the time for which the water travels to the city center, which is called the time of concentration, mm. is reduced. So it means we have shorter time for the water to get to the city center. That is the management. Then we come to the issue of settlement. People settle in the waterways. Mm -hmm. When there is flood and nobody is in the waterway, we may not notice that there is even flood. Mm. Nothing will be destroyed. And so people, we allow people to settle in the waterways. I, I feel like we mention the waterways all the time and people still do not know what the waterway is. Yeah. Where is the waterway that people have built on? Yeah, the waterways are where you see water passing mm. when it rains. Right. Or you see the wetlands where water, uh, when there is flooding, mm -hmm. some or when there is rain, some areas get ponded. Mm. And so those areas should be left free right. for the water to, to be pass. stored. Yeah. To be stored. Okay. And then they are released naturally. Mm. This is what God is, uh, himself has made for water to be stored at certain specific areas so that they do not allow where not all the water can flow mm -hmm. out. But we as human beings, we get to settle in those areas. Yeah. And so... What happens? Those areas begin to get paved. Then we remove all the trees, 
all the grasses which could have also helped in storing the water or retaining the water, we remove them. So we allow the water to go down. Mm -hmm. So that is one aspect of the settlement, which is poor set, uh, settlement management, which we are not doing. Then the last component, which uh, I mean the, the last cause, is um, the coordination mm -hmm. among institutions yeah. which engage in the development of the drainage system. Mm -hmm. There is poor coordination. So that one agency is developing, a, uh, uh, comes in to develop the drainage system. Mm -hmm. Maybe that agency is not well and uh, resourced with mm -hmm. personnel, mm -hmm. but they go ahead and do it. It doesn't go to the agency which is resourced right. to do the, the drainage or to do the management. L so that also has been some of our critical uh, problems. Problems. Yeah. Problems. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, Senna, you are an expert in dredging, yeah. uh, the, the dredging project that is being undertaken. Now, what is this supposed to do? What's supposed to be the relevance of that project? So, just as he rightly said, uh, the channel or the drain, which is, okay, within our scope of works, where we are working, is the door and Kali Lagoon. So, right from the Odor, which uh, starts from the confluence, the Onyasia Odor confluence at the cap rise, down towards the Kole Lagoon, we are to ensure that water that flows through there doesn't overflow its banks. As a result of improving on the efficiency aspect, the design, and also to ensure that we bring it back to its design state. Before we moved in, it was silted and it had lost about close to 50 percent, if I'm not mistaken, even more of its capacity to hold water at the same time, allow flow. So that when you have very minimum average rainfall, the slightest rainfall, you realize that because of its loss of capacity, it tends to easily overflow its right. banks. And there are also identified bottlenecks along the channel where he mentioned uh, uh, bridges, culverts, which are positioned in such a way that added to the silt, mm -hmm. debris, plastics that are blocking all of these passages. Right. We need to ensure that we clear them quickly to allow for ease of flow. That is on the, in the odor. Mm. So odor, we have to bring it to its design state, ensure that the bottlenecks are cleared from uh, debris and plastics, so, silt, right. and then down towards the Kole Lagoon, which also holds the water in us at the same time, allows it to flow out naturally. We are to bring it to a designed depth so that whatever is coming from upstream, downstream, the Kole Lagoon will be able to hold it or retain it mm. and at a point allow it to flow out easily right. into the sea. Right. Then we have the civil infrastructure bit, which is the breakwater which also falls within our scope. And then we also have the interceptor, which is uh, intercept uh, the flow between the Odor and then the Kole Lagoon. We are to bring that or rehabilitate that, mm. bring it back to its mm. function, uh, functional state to ensure that water from the Odor, polluted water, does not contaminate the Kole Lagoon. So it's, it's a big scope. And uh, in the interim, what we are doing now is trying to raise with time, as we are already in the rainy season, right. to ensure that all blockages are freed. Mm. Or access, narrow accesses, passages where water should flow easily are quickly desilted and dried to allow to for ease of flow right. downstream. Um, Mr. Amiteke, he mentioned the removal of debris and refuse you know, from these drains to make way for the flow of water. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when it rains mm -hmm. is that you see people uh, dropping uh, bags of refuse mm -hmm. in uh, these drains yeah. because they are not covered. Yeah. Why are they not covered? Yeah. True, uh, some of the drains need to be covered. Mm. Others will be difficult to cover. Now, if you do not cover your drain, and you don't manage your waste within the community, right. then people think that the, sh <laughs> the closest places to drop the material are the drains, yeah. which is wrong. Drains are not meant for waste conveyance. 
they are only meant for water conveyance. So that if you throw your refuse into the drain, I talked earlier on about settlement within the, mm. the flat plains. Right. If people who are settling in the flat plain, that's where the water is supposed to pass, and they continue to drop their waste or throw their waste into the system, mm -hmm. it's going to compound the system of flooding. And so, you see, earlier on, drainage management has been done without the looking at the waste. Right. Now, there, there's a shift. We have to do an integrated form of flood management okay. or drainage management where we have to look at the waste generation within the communities to see how the agencies which are responsible mm -hmm. for waste management can be encouraged, can be advised to make sure that adequate facilities are provided within the communities. Now, then, when this is done, the drains can be covered. Now, if you, don't, if you cover the drain and still people push mm -hmm. these waste into the drains, it becomes a major problem. No, it, it, the question I'm asking here is mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. drains are not covered in the first place. Yes. And there's no way they can be covered? That most of the drains can be covered. Yeah. But the bigger ones cannot be covered. Areas where we have very bad slopes mm -hmm. in the channel, like let's say Caprice to Odo. Right. Sorry, on the Odo, mm. Caprice to the Kole Lagoon. Okay. It's a big system. If you, the slopes are very bad and the conveyance of silt, ability of the water to convey silt in that zone is poor. So any silt that enters there mm -hmm. will definitely be dropping. So such a body of water, you don't need to easily cover it. But the contributing drains, NEMA, can yeah. be covered. Right. Uh, the uh, Onyasia can be covered. So they should so be covered. So all the roadside drains should be covered. So, so they that, should be covered. Yes, they should to prevent covered. people from throwing in the refuse. Now, the, the MPP government, the government currently in power, said they were going to make the hydrological department an authority. Yeah. And they were, they were waiting on a proposal mm -hmm. from your department. Has that been done already? Yeah, the, um, the ministry has uh, pushed the, uh, the, they have prepared a draft mm -hmm. uh, proposal for the making the hydrological services right. department an authority. Yes, it is good to make the hydro department an authority. Mm. But you see, hydro will make sure that all drainage issues are managed. Right. But not waste. Mm -hmm. So the waste management agencies must also come on board. Right. So now you mentioned that um, your job is to take out the refuse yes. from these drains. And when that is done, when it rains, it all go, goes back in there. Do you, do you realize that? No. The sand and uh, everything goes no, back that, in there. That, 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 that issue has mm -hmm. come up and I've explained on several media mm. outlets that what they see on the banks, mm -hmm. stockpile of material that has been taken out. Right. If you notice, you look at the banks, what we have between the drain and then the nearest uh, property or wall, it's so narrow that you cannot move it further away. Now, That's how, one how, challenge. How frequent should the dredging be, first of all? How frequent no, do we need to dredge the door, for instance? Yes. How so, frequent does it have to be? So I'll, I'll get to that point, but let me mm. just explain. So as per the <laughs> operational procedure, where, I mean, people are ranting and right. complaining that the material is going back, we take it out to allow for dewatering. So now you have to be wrapping yes, up for me. My time for is up. for dewatering process. <laughs> and then later that evening, we haul away. And then the next day, we have to take out. The volumes of silt, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is so much that it cannot all come out at once. Right. So it's a process. So then, with respect to the frequency, mm you realize a lot of squatters, which are not supposed to be on the banks, are they sweeping sand and rubbish in there. Mm. And already the natural process of sediment transport already is already in play with a low velocity, rapid rate mm. of siltation. Mm -hmm. It's so high that we need to go in very frequently. We have proposed uh, something to the government. Right. But uh, last time I mentioned that we need to go in quarterly. But we would have to do some assessment. Senna, we'll see how that Yes, Let me we'll, we'll definitely see, see how yeah. that The, the that frequency, you see, after the dredging of the channel, mm. we need what we call maintenance dredging. There should be continuous maintenance of, right. of the channels. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So 
now currently they are doing the dredging after the dredging there should be another contract which should push them to be doing the periodic okay. maintenance of the channel okay. the salt that's as i said that area is very bad yeah so once uh, they finish, they should be doing the periodic Thank you very much, mm. uh, Mr. Wai mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is a hydrologist. And Sena Adiepena is operations manager of Dredge Masters Limited. They joined us this morning to talk about the issue of flooding. We can't talk about it enough. We are yeah. still going to keep talking about it because it appears they have more to talk about.